Okay, what we have here is another kit. This is the amplifier kit, or actually is a pre-amplifier kit. Um, more like a buffer. Um, they sell this as a headphone amplifier, but uh, that's because of the impedance of it. But it really is a pre-amplifier or a buffer stage. And it is an actual... Uh, a tube, a tube amplifier. If you hear some uh, weird howling noises in the background, that is my cat. The wife is out of town. Uh, she took the younger dog with her. <laughs> Left me the cat, which I hate desperately. Cat, get out of here. Um, and also our incredibly old dog, which is also incontinent. So uh, I'm constantly having to clean the house up after her. But you know that that's what happens and uh, she she is an old dog and we love her so we deal with it she probably ain't gonna be around much longer but yeah um got this kit here you can see the numbers here you can order it is the 6j1 vacuum tube kit you know me i love putting kits together you know my dream job would be of being nine years old in China in a sweatshop. Yeah, that's what I would like to do. All right, this uh, kit is, uh, runs off of uh, AC voltage, so I did have to buy an adapter for it. Um, got a, it's a 12 volt AC, um, 1000 milliamps to run this guy. Um, when I bought it, I checked through all my wall warts and everything, and I didn't have one. Uh, and I don't have a transformer, a step-down transformer that's that low of voltage. So, yeah, I had to go and buy this guy on Amazon. So, here we go. Um, bumped into the camera. Let's uh, pick in the old skinning knives here. Um, let's pull the big guy out. go I don't want to I don't want to go to the hospital and get stitches tonight so let's be careful and let's see what this brings us more bags Oh, we got a bunch of goodies. A hey, whole, oh, whoa, rolling off the table here. Uh oh. Looks like I go, got to go digging for that. We lost an electrolytic capacitor. Uh, there's tons of stuff here. This looks like this one's actually going to be fun. And we got our PCB board. Here in uh, everything's clearly marked on it. And this looks like a quality PCB board, so that's a good sign so far. Of course, the electrolytic capacitors are a Chang Jex. Yeah, that's a good quality one. I doubt it. <laughs> and we got some resistors. They're probably 8 watt or quarter watt resistors. And we got a pot here. Ooh, it clicks on and off. And uh, some hardware knob. And could we possibly have... An actual transistor. Oh, we got a bunch of goodies. All right, I got to go and decipher for uh, decide. Ah, easy for me to say. Um, let me um, sort this stuff out, and I'll get back with you. Okay, let's look at the goodies here. We got us uh, some resistors. I'll have to go in and uh, check those out and see what the values are. 
And we got a buttload of uh, electrolytic capacitors here. Imagine they're for um, probably smoothing the power supply out. And then we got us uh, some ceramic capacitors. Those may be for decoupling um, diodes, probably for rectifying. Um, we have LEDs here. I think they fit under these um, tube connectors here. And then we have this uh, barrel jack connector and some RCA connectors. Um, we got us uh, some um, NPN and PNP transistors, hardware, potentiometer, and a knob. And then we got our tubes. Of course, our um, our friends and my relatives across the pond, I think they call those valves in our PCB. These are, um, what are those, uh, 6J1 tubes. I, I am not the guy. <laughs> to teach anybody about tubes. I really don't know a lot. This is the history of me with uh, tubes. When I was 19, I bought an amplifier. It was about 50 bucks from a pawn shop. Um, I had had um, a background when I was a child. I used to buy the um, little kits. Uh, I think it was a uh, science fair that sold them. Um, there were little kits to teach you about circuits. Of course, every toy I got, I took apart, tried to figure out how it worked. So um, I had minimum knowledge about this. I had an alcoholic father who actually, believe it or not, was an incredible mechanic and uh, knew everything about hydraulics and gasoline engines and uh, knew a good bit about electricity. Um, you know, and I would watch him work on stuff. Um, even though I knew about electricity, I didn't respect it. And when I was 19, I had this amplifier that I played guitar on. And um, for some reason, it would, after you play it a while, the volume would just cut out. It would take about a minute or so, and it would just start decreasing, and it would just cut out. And I had a guy show me in the back and showed me it was probably a tube and there was this one tube you could reach in the back and jiggle it and press it down and it would start working again so i just left the back of the amplifier off and when the amplifier would start to do that i would reach in the back grab the tube press it down jiggle it and it would start working well one day I was in my bedroom playing and it started to do that and I just blindly reached in the back of my environment with my right hand and I was barefooted, didn't have shoes or socks on and I had my foot on a floor AC vent and I would just reached my hand in there and I don't know what it was but something bit me at high voltage and it lit me up. It is the worst shock I have ever had. I would probably think if I'd grabbed it with my right hand and sent my left hand in, it would have probably killed me. But it it clenched my arm down, locked my leg up, uh, went out through the vent, and it was this huge blue pop. I mean, it just locked me down. It sent a lot of voltage through me. It scared me to death. And I have never messed with <laughs> tubes ever since i've been scared to death of them ever since so this is my first attempt at messing with tubes i'm pretty sure you know all this everything I, i'm going to be fine i've messed with incredibly high voltage uh since then uh, work on three phase sometimes and some other stuff but yeah um that's my whole um history of working with tubes so the moral of that story is beware if you don't know what you're doing, do not mess with high voltage. Okay, I had to uh, bring out the old makeshift hip helping hands for this. Uh, when you're doing uh, resistors and you have a bunch of them like this, uh, go ahead and test them out. Write the values down and then look on your legend on the board and verify every one of them before you get started. Um, mistakes can be made easily when you got a bunch of components like this. Okay, uh, normally when I solder boards together, I don't really care about the direction of the color codes or being neat with the resistors. Uh, 
when you're doing a board with a lot of components on it it is actually kind of important to have them symmetrical and having all the color codes in the right direction because it'll help you uh, troubleshooting but that being said to have all the resistors in uh, next thing I want to do is solder in all the diodes all right we're getting populated now uh, next thing I'm going to put in all the electrolytic capacitors and then um, right here where these tubes are mounted there's LEDs uh, I haven't decided whether I'm going to mount them or not um, I'm still up in the air I'll have to think about it but I'll uh, decide when I once I uh, put the electrolytic capacitors in uh, as of right now I'm leaning towards uh, putting them in you don't have to have them um, kind of gives you an effect that the tubes are lit but uh, they should have a slight glow of them as they're heating up anyhow so we'll see okay I got this guy all soldered together and I did put the LEDs in it you know for giggles but um, there is no paperwork on this guy whatsoever so I don't know which side is input and which is output but if you look on the traces here you'll notice that this side the traces lead to the potentiometer right here so I'm willing to bet this is the input side and this is the output side so let's hook this up and put the tubes in and see what we get okay I got the tubes in and uh, let's get ready to power this guy up you know when uh, I was younger tubes were a lot more common and I really wish I would have paid it more attention but back in the day I started when I was learning about electronics I thought tubes were stupid it was the way of the old but now it is a very lucrative industry there's a lot of people that play uh, that will pay big bucks for uh, tube amplifiers so all right let's turn it on we got LED lights I don't know if I can see the tubes coming on or not I may have too much light let me uh, kill some light oh yeah you can see it the top of the tubes are here they're lit up so all right well next thing we're going to do is some uh, voltage checks on it so let me cut the light back on and all right we got the multimeter here oh let's turn it over to DC and we got a couple of areas we need to check and one is right here and I think we should be getting uh 12.6 volts and we got 13.77 that's pretty well not pretty high but that's high so but I imagine that might be in range and then we should have 28 volts positive 35.4 volts and that's a lot higher than the the 20 was at 28 volts we have 35.5 volts that's higher too so hmm I am not an amplifier expert nor am I a tube guy so I don't know if that's going to be okay or not but um let's um let's hook um let's put the hookups in it and um one thing about this tube is it is a preamp it's not an amplifier it's a preamp or a, a or a buffer stage so the impedance of it is the output impedance is probably really high so they when I bought this uh, they sold they sold it as a, um, a headphone amplifier, but from my understanding the um, the in output impedance is really high. So even if you have um, headphones 
you're probably going to need to have an amplifier in the headphones to help boost the signal. You know, this is just um, to help um, boost a slight. I mean, when you have um, an output signal that's very weak, this is to make it a little bit stronger. And I really think that even uh, just your standard headphones, they're probably not going to cut it. it so you're not going to be able to just hook your uh, speakers on the output and you're not going to hear anything if you do that you're going to have to have an amplifier for this i'm not real sure what the output impedance is i could hook it up and test it but i'm lazy so i'm not going to do it um um because of a very high um output impedance i don't have correct resistors to uh, test this on the oscilloscope to find out you know what what the output um uh, um what the output um oh what's the word i'm looking for um oh darn cat will you cat will you please shut up <laughs> go away anybody want a cat all right but uh what what i was getting at is um i don't have a, um a proper resistor i could probably take a bunch of resistors and put it together to test it on the oscilloscope but I'm not going to go. I'm not going to do that. So I, there's no way for me to really test the output of this. And like I said, I, I'm too lazy to even figure out what the impedance is if I had the proper resistor. So, But uh, we're going to hook it up to an amplifier and then I'll run some audio through it and we'll see what it sounds like. Okay, uh, one thing I noticed immediately when I cut it on, I got hooked up to a preamp. I had to use a... Um, class d amplifier because of the um output impedance of this and the input impedance so i got this amplifier cut all the way up i don't know if you can hear it but there is a hum and it gets louder and i'm not real sure where it's coming from we're going to probe around right here Oh, we got something there. Yeah, I really don't know enough about tubes. Um, I imagine we could probably do some shielding of some sort. But let's put some sound in it and see what we get. It is pretty neat that the LEDs light through the board there, but... Wondering, um, one thing that I thought they could probably do is um, as you uh, turn the volume up, maybe increase the intensity of the LEDs and decrease too. That would be neat. Um, but I think I might swap those LEDs out too for some uh, ones that um, change colors. So. But uh, yeah, let's put some, uh, some sounds to it and let's see what it sounds like. All right, let's put some sound into it. tell you it sounds pretty good i like it um i do know the tubes are working um 
if you noticed when we first cut it on it the noise slowly increased and everything as the tubes heated up so that means the tubes are working they're working properly um yeah it sounds it sounds fine um i don't know if you can't probably tell through the camera the sound quality and everything but um the there's not a lot of bass coming out of this thing um but other than that yeah it you know I, i'm not a sound expert um you know a lot of people say that tubes are uh, very softer sounding than your other style amplifiers um it sounded great i really liked it um i think this is actually a pretty good kit for the amount of money uh, i paid for it i really enjoyed putting the circuit board together you know yeah i would advise them buying this um don't buy this if you buy it like i do and they say it's a headphone amplifier yeah it's it's not going to do that but um yeah hook it up to um if you want to hook it up to your computer speakers it already has a built-in amplifier and it should work fine um great for uh record players and stuff like that it just remember if you're going to use it it can't be standalone you're going to have to hook another amplifier up to it but yeah I, I, i'm tickled to death I, I really like this um if you guys like this video give me the thumbs up and uh like and subscribe and y'all have a good day all right uh one last thing um i just hooked this up to our record player through the amplifier and it made a difference it really did um i can't play um and hook it up and play it because i'll get a copyright strike i don't <laughs> have any uh royalty free records but um yeah it made a difference so for what it's worth yeah hook this up to your record player and test it out yeah i will definitely uh uh, I might be building an amplifier for the record player with this. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, it made a difference.